Knowledge for Men, episode 34. Welcome to knowledgeformen.com, where boys turn into men, where men turn into leaders, into lions, the ferocious few who stand strong, a place where you grow to become the man you were born to be. It's time to take massive action towards the life you want, get the health, get the relationships, business, and career you've always dreamed of, achieve a level of success and happiness that you've been searching for for so many years. Life has given you enough, and it's time to take a stand and take full control of your life. Stand with us as we interview the most inspiring and successful leaders to give you real world advice to crush life and awaken the sleeping giant inside of you. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook download today at kfmbook.com. There's over 100,000 titles to choose from for your smartphone, tablet, or computer. It's a perfect way to listen to your favorite books in the car, in the gym, or at home. Check out kfmbook.com to start learning in your downtime. All right, welcome. Today's episode is going to be about your health and fitness and how you can utilize this to overcome extreme depression or challenging times that you're going through. Guys, don't neglect your health as an excuse that you're busy or you don't have time. It's extremely important, and you can use fitness to actually break through some of your life's challenges. All right, guys, I'm here with Ted Rice. He's a science nerd, an accomplished martial artist, and a personal trainer with 14 years of experience. Using exercise and nutrition principles he's learned from extensive study, he transformed from a skinny, 150-pound, fast-food-eating party guy to having an athletic, 205-pound muscular physique. In his 14 years of experience, Ted has trained celebrities like Ricky Martin, Robert Downey Jr., to CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, professional and amateur athletes, and men and women who just want to look better on the beach. All right, Ted, happy to have you on the show. Thanks, Andrew. Really happy to be here. All right, let's do it. Let's jump in. What's your favorite success quote and why? Okay, my favorite success quote is from Bruce Lee. He said, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, add what is specifically your own. And why that's so important to me and why I love that quote so much is it really gets down to the bare bones of getting better at anything. You try things. If it works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't work, forget about it. And eventually you get to the point where you try enough things, you put your own spin on it. And I've used that in every area of my life, professionally, with my personal training business, personally, and I think it really gets down to what's important. Use what works and forget the rest. Love that quote from Bruce Lee. And finally, somebody quotes Bruce Lee, one of my favorite figure celebrities in history. And now, Ted, let's jump into your story. How did you get started with what you do? Yeah, well, uh, let me start with kind of a really troubling event that happened to me, something pretty intense. I hope it's cool to share. But when I was 19, my little brother was actually kidnapped and murdered. And it was something that you can imagine. It's even hard to talk about, but it really made me reevaluate what I wanted to do with my life. I was left in such a black hole and I I ended up... uh, bouncing around from job to job and not knowing really what to do with myself. And I had all this anger and all this pain. And I eventually got into what I'm doing now, which is personal training. And what personal training did in fitness in general is it it allowed me to take all that pain I had, all that frustration, all that sadness and start to help other people with, although they may not have gone through that similar event where they, they lost someone like I did and in the way I did, because it, I know I didn't really go into details about it, but it was a really nasty case. It was all over the news in South Florida and it was a big deal. Actually, my parents ended up meeting with two presidents and getting laws changed over it. So it was a huge, huge deal. But everybody has pain in their life, sadness. They have something, whether it's something, I don't want to say smaller scale because I don't like to diminish anybody's problems or whatever struggle they're going through. But, you know, maybe it's not as intense as that. But everybody has these things and and everybody could improve. So I took all that energy that I was left with and I put it into helping people through fitness. And I think it's such a I want to use the word pure way 
uh, to, to, I want to use the word pure because our physiology is so fundamental to who we are. And sometimes I think people don't realize that. They feel bad because they think it's psychological reasons. And a lot of what we feel actually has to do with this, all these processes that happen in our body. And although I've had all these terrible things happen to me and, and other people have too, if you keep yourself in shape and if you address your nutrition and keep yourself healthy, it makes everything better. So that's, <laughs> that's how I got into what I do now. Ted, that's a really, you know, it's quite a story and it's not, you know, I don't, we don't hear it, get that on the show too often. So for you to share that and be open about that, I, I'm honored that you shared that with uh, the Knowledge for Men community and to really impact, you know, a lot of guys and, and try and help them grow and, and teach them some of the things that you learned from that traumatic experience. But I have to ask you, what kept you going? Really, like, what kept you going? Because that is, that is a major event right there. What kept you going, and how did the gym and, and fitness come into play? Well, what kept me going? I had started exercising before that, but I had actually stopped after. I mean, I was always into exercise, but I just, I would have to say that wanting to feel better because it was such a traumatic event in my life. And I was so low. I've never been that low. I, I mean, I'm 37 now. That happened when I was actually 19. And it was just such a low point in my life. I had to change it. And it, that's similar to what a lot of people say. You, you know, you hit rock bottom and you got to go back up. Now, I wasn't addicted to drugs or anything like that or but I had really hit bottom in that way. So alone, so in so much pain, and I just had nowhere to go but up. And I eventually got back into the gym, and I guess it was just wanting to still enjoy life and wanting to get away from that feeling. I mean, I was young. I was 19. I had my whole life ahead of me, and all I could see if I kept up the feelings that I was having and the type of behaviors. I, I wasn't really eating well during that time, even though, like I said, I was into fitness before working out nutrition before, but I really kind of stopped. I even had a friend of mine, uh, my, my friend's dad, one of my friend's dad said, uh, remarked on how skinny I was and <laughs> it was pretty bad. So what kept me going was just the hope that things could get better. If I just pushed, if I hung in there long enough, if I pushed through the pain pushed through everything, it would get better. And it did, Andrew. It took a while, but it did. And at what point did you realize that fitness was helping you climb out of rock bottom? Yeah. Not to get too deep into the physiology and neurochemistry involved, but a lot of how we feel, regardless of external circumstances, regardless of what you've been through in your life, you can still feel good if you do things that make you feel good. And what, what I mean by that is you can reduce stress in your life. It was a very stressful event. Stress is not just some psychological thing that we experience. It's also hormonal. There's hormones called cortisol and adrenaline and all these things that get released. And we know through science what chronic stress does. And by exercising, you make yourself more resistant to stress. And by through proper nutrition, you make yourself more resistant to stress. Your body needs all these nutrients. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want anybody to take away the wrong thing. I'm not saying, well, no matter what happens, just work out, you'll feel better. Because I actually did a ton of psychological work, a ton of inner work as well. But I don't believe that you can be a healthy human being, regardless of what's going on, without addressing your fitness and your nutrition. Okay, it's so fundamental to who we are and how we feel. 
yeah, I think that's something a lot of guys can overlook. And when we look at health, I look at these three pillars, your fitness, your diet, and sleeping. With those three things, if, you ha- if you're doing all of them well, you're going to be a healthy person. And sometimes those can be out of the loop if you're eating well, but you're not working out. Or if you work out, but you're not eating right, you're not eating correctly. Or if you're doing both, but you're not sleeping, you're getting three, four hours of sleep. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that sleep? Yeah, personally, I mean, I lost a lot of sleep and there's a ton of, st- <laughs> not that you need studies to tell you going without sleep is really terrible for you, but there's plenty of them. It, it increases the stress hormones. It reduces the amount of testosterone that you produce. So yeah, it's really bad. Sleep is a very important thing, like you mentioned. And the whole package, just being healthier and not to say that you can't have a drink or party every once in a while or whatever, but it's really, people should definitely be more focused on that. And at, what you said is absolutely true. In my business, I see that all the time where people are either exercising, but they think, oh, well, you know, I'm exercising. I can eat whatever I want. No, <laughs> you can, you, you can do whatever you want, but it's not going to have that beneficial of effect on you. You know, there's just so many other things at work. It, there really needs to be that balance between your lifestyle, your nutrition and the exercise. And I know that you're also involved in martial arts and combat sports. Can you share with some of the guys the benefits of that and how you can work that into your fitness regimen? Absolutely. Well, back to what happened to my brother, you know, the guy who did it, he was a, like a 28 year old man at the time. And I was 19. And I felt like, wow, if my brother, if, if I were there, I don't know if I could physically protect my brother from this guy. Like I'm strong, but the combination of feeling helpless and powerless. And I think a lot of guys feel that way. I was also picked on in school. I didn't you know, mention that before, but I was picked on and bullied. Nothing too terrible, but enough to really make me never want to experience that again. And I actually did a bunch of different martial arts, but the one that changed me the most was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA. And I have a brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I competed quite a bit in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I you know, have a few medals to speak of. But what combat sports allow guys to do, and some guys don't have problems with this, but if you do have a problem where you feel threatened by other guys or you've been bullied and you kind of feel this sense of insecurity in that physical way, Combat sports are super important for you to get over that fear, to get over those insecurities. And that's what it did for me. It allowed me to just feel more comfortable so I could be more of who I was inside. And very important for that. I think actually in general for men, you should face something very, I don't want to say life-threatening, but something where you could really get hurt. In indigenous societies, they used to have a passage, a rite of passage to become a man, which usually involved facing death. It might have been actually facing death, literally, like going, trying to hunt down a lion, or it might have been, you know, there was a, a movie where this guy got lost, where this kid got lost in the rainforest in Brazil, and they put him in, in his rite of passage to become a man, they put him in this pile of ants that bit the hell out of them. And although it didn't kill them, all that's a fictional movie, but there's all these rites of passage and that's all gone in our society. And that's probably a good thing for the most part, but men have to find a way to go through that rite of passage to really become a man because there's a lot of guys out there from who are younger to much older and they never had that. And it's so obvious when you talk to them, when you deal with them, that they're 40-year-old boys. They're 50-year-old boys. And it's really important. Maybe you don't have to do combat sports. That's what worked for me. But you have to do something that really challenges you in that way and where you face a bit of danger. We're becoming so wussified today in the United States. And it's, I don't think it's a good thing. So combat sports was my way of helping myself become more of a man and overcoming those fears. 
Ted, I like that you took MMA and combat sports in the direction of being a, a rite of passage, a form of a rite of passage for men, because you are in a in a very scary. It is a scary situation. You're facing your fears. It's a huge challenge. I mean, you're one on one against somebody else. And when you look at other, you know, tough American sports like football or I mean, like baseball or, or basketball, it's like those are team sports. There's several other guys or 10 other guys that you're playing with, that you're fighting with, and it's a team effort. But when you're fighting, it's a one-on-one and you seldom are going to get breaks. It's just you versus that person in an intimate physical engagement. And there are no excuses. You can't point fingers. It's you versus him. And as a rite of passage, it's a, I can see that being for for many guys. I think it would really <clears throat> just give them that drive, that that confidence. Like you said, it's like, do you look at other guys and you feel kind of like intimidated? Like whatever he says, you're gonna do. It's like no. It's like when you're training. I mean, you know what you're doing. And even guys who are big and they work out, it's like you, you think you're scared of them, but really, you know, they're just big guys and big bodies, but they don't necessarily you know, know how to fight. And having trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a few years, I can, you know, it is a, you know, it is a very, you're getting your arm ripped off in some situations. And of course you can tap, but you want to fight it through and you want to try and recover. But yeah, Jiu Jitsu, for me, it was a, it was a great experience, not just as a rite of passage and not just physically, but also there's a lot of lessons you can apply from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu into, into life. Absolutely. You really, there's a, a part in, I think it was the second Matrix movie where the guy fights Neo because he's like protecting the Oracle or something. The Neo says to the guy, why would you do that? Like we're on the same side. He's like, well, you never truly know a man until you fight him. And I'm pa- paraphrasing, but I really believe in that. You start to roll with someone and it's so intimate and you, you really get to see how people respond under, under pressure. It's like you said, Andrew, it's, you know, when you're being choked or having your arm hyperextended, it brings up some serious fear. Like, are you going to tap out? Are you going to, are you going to be the tough guy? What, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle that situation? Are you going to be man enough to do what you need to do in that situation? And I think you learn a lot of humility from it as well. As I'm sure you know, when you first start doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you get tapped out all the time. And there's a huge amount of humility that comes with that where you lose all the time in the beginning versus, say, boxing, where you can have someone who's a little more gifted athletically or Thai boxing. And a person who's gifted athletically but doesn't have a lot of training can really throw some aggressive blows, but not in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Everybody has to go through that trial by fire, trial by getting tapped. Yeah, especially in jiu-jitsu because the smaller guy, especially when you're new, if there's a smaller guy and he's a few belts ahead of you and he has more experience, he will beat you every time. Like you're not going to get lucky. You're going to just get beat up every time by somebody who's, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds lighter than you when you're first starting out until you really start to gain some experience and uh, get higher belts. Absolutely. I got some friends of mine who fight MMA and they're 120 pounds and they, you know, you show me the biggest, toughest guy, well, maybe not that you know, but uh, someone who's really big and tough, who you think is really big and tough, but has no training. And my uh, 120 pound friend is going to make quick work of him. (laughs) So it's really cool in that way because all of a sudden these genetic limitations that we think we have, well, I'm not a really big guy. Yeah, well, they don't matter anymore. Well, until, like you said, once you get to a, a particular level, then, then weight does matter. But just in, uh, in terms of that self-defense aspect, it's, it's really cool, really powerful. And now, Ted, I want to shift a, a little bit of a direction here and go into some of the lessons, you know, the biggest lessons that you've learned in the last about 18 years or so since you've been involved heavily in health and fitness and MMA? Okay, with fitness, yeah, I would say develop strength. One thing that I see in gyms a lot are guys are pretty weak. And I don't mean weak like there should be, uh, you know, like everybody has to deadlift 500 pounds or, or bench press 600 pounds or anything like that. Guys are doing all this functional training stuff, which some of it's very good. I incorporate that. But focus on strength. Focus on big lifts 
like deadlifts, like squats, like bench presses, like overhead presses. Use the barbell. And don't ever let me see you on that BOSU ball unless uh, you have an injury that you're rehabilitating or you're specifically working on balance for a sport or something that you do in your life. But if you're trying to build muscle and strength and you've got 10-pound dumbbells and you're doing squats on the BOSU ball, which, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, it's that half exercise ball with the flat half where it's plastic and then so it's that half ball thing. So it's a balanced training tool. So anyway, focus on building strength. Strength is so important and it's really the fundamental characteristic of every other aspect of fitness. We don't realize that sometimes, but everything has to do with strength. And if you disagree with me, you can talk to my client who had a knee rehabilit- a knee replacement and had to rehabilitate himself to the point where he could have the strength to get up out of a chair, right? It's just really important. So even if you think, oh, well, I got to work my cardiovascular system by going running, that's good too, but you even need strength to do that. And the stronger you are, the easier those things are going to be. So that would be one. Another would be also to get very good at using your body weight. So even a sample exercise routine would be to start with some barbell exercises and then move to some body weight exercises because our bodies are something that we have to deal with all the time. And a lot of people don't really have that great of control of their body. So body weight exercise, extremely important. Squats, push-ups, pull-ups. There's so many different body weight exercises that we could go into, but dealing with your body weight. Another would be nutrition. Make sure you're eating enough protein. Have protein with every meal. Have vegetables with every meal. I read a quote by, I think it was Pavel Satsalin, who's this Russian kettlebell expert. He said, eat protein for strength, eat vegetables for health, and drink water. And I was like, man, that's beautiful. It doesn't get more simple and straightforward and effective than that. So those would be three. I could keep going all day. So, (laughs) No, no, no. That was good. Those are three really good lessons. Strength, get good at body weight, and for your nutrition, protein for strength, vegetables for health, and drink plenty of water. That's a good way to just summarize health right there. And I want to now dive into what's your key piece of advice that you would recommend to somebody who's feeling depressed and maybe overwhelmed with a specific, like a huge challenge that they're undergoing right now? Yeah. I mean, in spite of some of the things I've been through, my brother being one, some of the the other things that I didn't mention, which were also pretty traumatic, but yeah, I'm not a depressed person and you know, I have my down moments, but the key is to Always be working on something. Always get yourself to do something. Always start exercise. Always force yourself to eat right and to grow. One thing that's coming up right now is the guy, this happened nearly 20 years ago, and the guy who killed my brother, he's actually been on death row almost all this time, and he's being going to be executed, and it's happening next month. And it brings back, although you... Some people may think that it's good. It's a good thing that's happening or I'll get closure. Man, none of that exists. It brings up a lot of stuff that I don't usually have in in the forefront of my mind. And the key there is you just have to keep working through things and also finding a passion and a purpose in your life. You know, something that really makes you feel alive because I'm, I'm me personally, I'm super passionate about helping people with fitness and nutrition. And that's my way of channeling all that energy. So I'm no longer concerned about myself so much, a lot of depression, and I don't want to diminish what anybody's feeling, but I think it's very self-indulgent. You think about what's going wrong in your life and there's a lot of rumination, a lot of thinking about what's going on in your life and why it's so bad and you know your girlfriend left you or your parents aren't as close to you or or not and i think it's very self indulgent in external things where you don't have a lot of control you can't control those things but starting to take action on the things that you can control is key 
And having that passion to, to put that energy in, I think a lot of people don't have a lot of, don't have a, a lot of guys in particular, they really don't have like a thing they're going for. That's why I think it's so awesome what you're doing, Andrew, with the knowledge for men, because you're really helping guys try to find, try to find that meaning, find that passion and purpose, try to become a better man. And that's so, those are the things that will knock you out of a depression. Those are the things that work for me at least. But always, there's nothing to be gained by sitting around. There's nothing to gain for me to sit around and think about how my brother was murdered and that guy who's sitting on death row and all the stress I went through. Because I didn't talk about this before, but I was actually a, uh, I was actually a suspect for the murder at first, which was just added insult to injury, right? Or I'm sorry, the disappearance. It wasn't, we weren't quite sure what happened to the FBI. But I was interrogated by the FBI. I was interrogated by the local homicide department in Miami. I mean, it does nothing for me to think about that stuff, to ruminate on it. So you got you guys got to take action. You got to believe that there's something to live for. There's something, there's a passion out there for you. You just have to find it. And you keep pushing and trying things and trying to get better and listening to things like this awesome podcast, Knowledge for Men. And if you keep at it, things will happen for you. You will get better. You will get out of that depression. And like, of course, I mentioned before, you have to take care of yourself. I don't even, me personally, I don't know how people are not depressed when they're not exercising and eating right. I don't know how, I, I think it's amazing. So that would be my uh, take on dealing with depression. Man, Ted, I'm being personally moved by listening to you speak and you're right on track. You've got to find your path. You've got to find your purpose and just stay motivated to what you want and figure it out and just keep going. Absolutely. All right, Ted, let's now move into the knowledge round. Are you ready, Ted? Let's do it, Andrew. For you, the listeners of the Knowledge for Men podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their awesome service. And you know what? Something I've noticed after interviewing hundreds of successful people is that they all read a ton of books. If you want to be successful, you've got to educate yourself. I don't always have time to sit down and read a book, so I personally recommend listening to audiobooks in your car, in the gym, or on the go. You can pick up for free any one of my favorite best-selling books like How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins, Mastery by Robert Greene, Choose Yourself by James Altucher, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, or any other audiobook you want. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from. To download your free audiobook today, go to kfmbook.com. Again, that's kfmbook.com for your free audiobook today. Start learning, growing, and becoming the man you want to become now. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives. Starting in 3, 2, 1, showtime. Ted, how would you explain living a healthy lifestyle to a newcomer? Absolutely. It's all about pushing yourself with exercise appropriately, combining that with rest, because some people push themselves too much, and making sure you're eating a healthy diet, which could be a, a whole podcast unto itself, but sticking with protein, vegetables, and drinking plenty of water. And if it doesn't fall into that, you probably don't want to eat too much of it. You know, there's some things with the carbohydrates we could tweak depending on your activity level. But in the beginning, proteins, vegetables, water, and pushing yourself appropriately with weights and focusing on getting stronger. All right. And Ted, what was holding you back from becoming the man you are today? Fear, insecurity, not believing in myself. Maybe even the most important is I didn't have anybody. I didn't have any. I actually I did have some good mentors, but I, nothing like what is available now. If there was a podcast like Knowledge for Men out there when I was nineteen, going through all all that stuff I went through, I would have been so much better off. So having that knowledge, because if you don't know it, you you, you don't know. But 
it, there's no excuse for not knowing in the age of the internet. Hey, Ted, thanks for the plug there. It seems like you really uh, are a supporter of what I'm doing here. I appreciate that. Cool, man. Abs- I, I really enjoy your podcast a lot. Thank you so much. And Ted, what's the best advice you've ever received from a mentor? Ah, man, that's a hard one. I've had so many mentors in my life that I've sought out, but I would, what's popping in my head right now, question everything. Never think you know too much. Never think you've got something completely handled. Always question things. That's what a mentor of mine always said. Always question things and always try to dig deeper and always challenge yourself. I like that. And Ted, what are the three most influential books that you've ever read and why? Three most influential books. I'd have to say Stephen Pressfield, Gates of Fire, about the Spartans at Thermopylae. If you like the movie 300, the book makes the movie seem like it was for 12-year-old girls. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's really intense. And if you're going through a hard time, it can really help you. It can really kind of strengthen you. It's a book. It's not a long book. It can, you can read it pretty quickly. It's, it's a great book. It's actually on the U.S. Marines reading list, required reading list. So anyway, second book, I would say... How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Why? Because that was the first sort of self-improvement book that I read. And it started telling me, hey, learn people's names. Hey, pay attention to other people. Hey, stop being so self-absorbed. Start doing these things. And you can have a better life, better relationships with people. And I've read a lot of great books, self-development books. But that one in particular was kind of the first one. So it started me off. And it's kind of an old book, but it's still relevant. Everything in there is relevant to this day. And my third book, I would have to say another one by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. And that's another self-improvement book, but it's by Stephen Pressfield. He's actually a novelist, not a Tony Robbins, who his whole profession is based around self-improvement. Stephen's a, a, a novelist wrote all these novels, but he had a bunch of, he had a bunch of things he had to overcome. And he really tells you how he did it. And he drills into you what you really need to do in your life to succeed. And it really comes down to putting in the work. It's such a great message. I actually listened to it on audio. Fantastic book. And just like Ted mentioned, audio is a great way to be learning on the go. I am partnered up with Audible so you can pick up Gates of Fire, The War of Art, or How to Win Friends and Influence People for free right now. If you go to kfmbook.com, you can pick up a free audiobook and you don't even have to sign up for anything. It's just a free trial. Check it out. I use it all the time. And I'm definitely going to have to check out Gates of Fire, actually. There's no way that you can make 300 look like it's made for a <laughs> girl. So I'm, I'm going to have to check that one out. I don't know. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm interested in, in your take on it because when I read it, I was – I actually read it before I saw 300. So it kind of – when I went and saw 300, I was like, WTF, come on. But now it's a movie I I can enjoy, but it's kind of like reading the book than watching a movie, you know? Yeah, let's do it. We'll have to uh, Skype chat offline about that book. And moving on, what's one action one person can take right now that would get them closer towards their dreams? Developing a habit of taking action. A lot of people feel that they have to know more before they do something. And it's really the opposite. I mean, you don't want to go shark diving without proper instruction. But when it comes to like developing a business or going after what you want or talking to a girl or any of these things or trying something like or starting an exercise program, training with a trainer, I have a lot of people who say, oh, well, you know, I want to train with you, but I have to get in better shape before I train with you. It's like, no, that's my job. I'm the one who's going to get you in better shape. Uh, or who's going to take you from not being in shape to being in shape. So just start developing a habit of taking action. All right. Well said. And the next question is a scenario. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Imagine you woke up and you were 20 years old. What would you do? Would you do anything differently? Uh, Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. I would take things a little easier. I would invest. I wouldn't 
what I mean by take things easier is I wouldn't take things so personally. I would be more involved in personal development, trying to find my way through things, trying to develop as a person, as a man. I would try different things. I would try more things. I kind of got sucked up into a few different things, jujitsu being one of them. And being, unless you're going to be a jujitsu world champion and that's your goal and that's your dream or any other thing, you want to be a well-rounded person. So I would, I would uh, do that and I would get online. I would start a website. I would, I would make some connections. I would make sure I'm listening to podcasts like Knowledge for Men and other podcasts and I would be on blogs and just educating myself better and I would be chasing less girls. The girls will come when you get your act together, guys. That's when they come. So that's what I would do differently. I like it. Good sound advice. And Ted, going in now, if you had to write your obituary today, what would it say? Ted was a person who believed in his friends and clients, because all my clients are really my friends to one degree or another, but who believed in his clients and friends and family and helped empower them and raise them up and did his best to do that. <laughs> not, not, not maybe the most eloquent put, but I want to be known as someone who helped people and was very passionate about doing it. And that's what I want my obituary to say. I like that. And Ted, deep, deep question. <laughs> What's your philosophy on life? Yeah, I would say to go through life powerfully, but also temper it with humility and with humor. That's really how I, I, that's really what I believe in. You have to be powerful in life, not just for yourself, but for other people. You have to be that person who people look at and they're like, wow, oh, he can do it. I can do it. And he's telling me I can do it. And you have to keep a sense of humor about things and not take things personally. You know, I know I said that already, but it's so important. People take things so personally now. <laughs> Just uh, you know, any little Facebook exchange or a girl turning a guy down, and you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh man, God! <laughs> it's like, no, man, it's really not a big deal. She just wasn't having a good day. All right, it had nothing to do with you. So uh, that's what my philosophy would be. All right, and now that we're coming to a close here, do you have any last words that you'd like to share or a parting piece of guidance for all the listeners today? Definitely. Guys, you are on the right track. You're listening to this podcast or podcasts like it. I'm sure there's a lot of good ones out there, but Andrew with Knowledge for Men's doing a great job. You're on the right path. Keep going. All right? Keep going. Whatever you're looking to happen will eventually happen if you just keep going. So stay with it. Stay the course, keep learning, keep listening to things like Knowledge for Men, and your life is going to benefit as a result. Awesome, Ted. Thank you so much for uh, all the support that uh, you've given Knowledge for Men. And let's learn more about what are you working on today? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, I'm actually working on a podcast as well. It's very similar to what you're doing, but a little more focused on fitness nutrition, lifestyle. I didn't really go into it, but I'm a bit of a science nerd. I have a degree in biology. I actually wanted to do medical school before I pulled my head out of my butt and figured out, although doctors are, are great and they serve a purpose, that it was I wanted to focus on health, not diseases, right? And so I'm working on that. I haven't launched it yet, but I'll, I'll be launching it soon. And I'm also very passionate about some of the exercise and nutrition regimens that I'm working on. I'm getting better results in less time and with less injuries. So, <laughs> so, so really passionate about that right now. All right. Sounds like you got a lot going for you there, Ted. Go ahead and give yourself a plug so the audience can get in contact with you. Definitely. You can go to my website at www.ryce.fitness.com. That's Rice Fitness, Rice spelled with a Y. You can connect with me on Facebook. Just look for Ted Rice 
and add me as a friend. And you can go to my fan page, Alpha Fitness and Lifestyle, or my Twitter as well at, under the same name. And Ted, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing a really tough story that you know you mentioned that you hadn't shared ever before. So thank you for sharing that with my community. And you know I, I pay a lot of respect for, for you and your family. But that's going to be a wrap. And you really did a good job on this episode. And I know that we're going to impact thousands of lives together. Awesome, man. I, I really enjoyed it. All right. And that's going to wrap up episode 34 with Ted Rice. And real quick, just wanted to give a shout out about my private mastermind group called The Lion's Den. It's a group of guys all striving to improve their life in the four pillars, health, wealth, relationships, and personal growth. It's a private Facebook group. We meet, we share goals, we hold each other accountable, and we take massive action on hitting those goals. I don't know about you, but most of my life, I was always surrounded by maybe not the most inspiring individuals, but people that I had a lot of fun with. And it didn't really take me to the next level until I really understood this concept. By Jim Rohn, you are the average of the five people you spend your most time with. This has been true for me in terms of my health, in terms of my business, in my relationships, and in my personal growth. The secret and the number one life hack that I can offer to anybody is to change your environment. Change who you hang out with and change who you surround yourself with and you'll change your entire life. That, I can assure you. And it's who you decide to hang out with is who you're going to become. It's just the way it is, okay? It's like we're all chameleons and we adapt to the environment. Whatever is going on around us, that's what we end up doing. So why not be with the best people possible? And I put together a group called The Lion's Den. You can check it out at knowledgeformen.com and then just click on Lion's Den and you can apply there and I can get you going in uh, literally 24 hours. Or you can just email me directly at andrew at knowledgeformen.com. And as I'm saying this, I'm like, that's probably why I'm getting so much spam. Because <laughs> I'm getting a lot of spam ever since I started sharing my email on the podcast. Anyways, I should probably delete that. But check out the Lion's Den, guys. It's a really cool group of guys that are really just pushing themselves to the next level. So if you're looking for that and you want to be surrounded by a lot of guys, there's about 60 members right now. And I can assure you that if you participate, get involved, you're going to see massive change in your life. And it's only 19 bucks a month for a private Facebook group, a mastermind of awesome people from all over the world. All right, guys, check it out, knowledgeformen.com, Lion's Den, or shoot me an email, andrew at knowledgeformen.com. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast show. It's been a pleasure having you be a part of a thriving community of men who want to crush it in all aspects of life. I'm on a mission here to inspire millions of guys. And with your help, we're going to make a dent in the universe. Check out knowledgeformen.com for a ton of free content that's designed to help you live a remarkable life. Again, that's knowledgeformen.com. I hope to see you there. And always remember, 2014 is the official year of the crush, where we take action to get the life we've always dreamed of. This is your host, Andrew Farabee. And until next time, let's do it.